Hello everybody! This is Vigilante 8 Second Offense for the N64. It came out in early 2000 and it also came out on the PS1 and the Dreamcast in late 1999. The N64 version was supposed to come out at the same time but it got delayed. I've already reviewed the first Vigilante 8 on the N64 so check out that review if you haven't already. In that review of the first game I mentioned that I did not know where the name Vigilante 8 came from but I want to thank Justin for telling me what it meant. It's actually V8 for V8 engine. And I also want to thank Zach who pointed it out and Edscape, Stonehenge, and Seamus. And I get the point! Okay, so Second Offense takes place in the 1970s, just like the first game, but this time there's some time traveling involved, so there's some futuristic cars that are taking place in the war, basically. It's a war between three factions, the Vigilantes, the Coyotes, and the Drifters. So you basically drive around trying to kill each other, and there's mostly the same weapons as the first game. There is one additional weapon, a flamethrower, which is pretty cool. They They've also introduced vehicle transformations where you run over an icon and your vehicle turns into a different type of vehicle that allows you to go over water or it might just make your vehicle hover above the terrain. There's an arcade mode where you just pick some opponents and you duke it out on a certain map. And there's a survival mode where it's kind of the same thing except the enemies keep coming one after another as you destroy them and you just need to see how long you can last. By the way, I'm only reviewing the one player modes in this game. I did not have someone to play against or to play with. So just bear that in mind. If you played this with other people in the past, perhaps your experience was much different than mine. But the center of the game is the quest mode and that's where you just pick a character and you go through a handful of missions and as you go through them, your storyline progresses for that character. This is also how you unlock the other cars and characters in the game. On each of the missions you not only have to destroy the opponents but you have to carry out objectives which for the most part means you have to collect things and you also have to protect certain targets. When you find the weapons laying around you can only hold three but if you are grabbing an object like a briefcase in order to complete a mission that takes up a weapon slot too leaving you with only two weapons. Each vehicle also has a special weapon and those tend to be the most powerful and the most fun to use. Each of the main weapons have special moves, there's three of them each, and they consist of doing certain movements on the analog stick, such as down down right shoot. Compared to the first game, this game has much better AI. In the first game I complained that I can just drive up to an opponent and mash a bunch of buttons and just kill them right there without them resisting that much. But in this game they do run away easier and they are much more vicious, they think a little bit better and they are much harder to drive up to with the exception of a few of the slower vehicles. And overall this makes the game more difficult which is a good thing because the first one I thought was too easy. The selection of cars I believe is better. There's a garbage truck and that alone makes the selection better than the first game in my opinion. And the stages I thought were better. There's just more interactive elements in them and they're very well thought out. There's so many secrets like there's this large donut on a donut shop that you can actually free up and cause it to roll around. One of the standouts is the NASA facility in Orlando and you can fire off a rocket, you can get sucked through these wind tunnels, you can go out onto the water and have sharks chasing you. It's just really cool. All that being said, there are some things that I think this game does worse. It's lacking some of the humor of the first game and with the introduction of these futuristic vehicles, it takes the 1970s aesthetic down a notch. I found the game's missions to be a little bit harder to complete because sometimes you just can't tell what they want 
want you to do. But it's nothing that a few lookups on the internet wouldn't help out with. The frame rate is also something I don't like. The game just doesn't run smoothly, and it might be because of the complexity of these stages and all the little secrets that they have going on. It may just be a little bit too much for the N64 to handle. There is a way to increase the resolution to high if you have the N64 expansion pack, and that takes the frame rate down even more, and I don't recommend using that setting. You can tell a difference in the clarity of the graphics though. There's also a higher setting than that called Ultra, which you have to unlock with a password, and that further increases the clarity, but once again, it's just hard to look at. It just doesn't run smoothly. By far my biggest complaint about the game is the controls. It seems like they're a little bit worse than the first game, which weren't that good to begin with. It's sometimes very hard for me to just pick up an icon that's right in front of me because I can't quite turn the way I want the car to turn. I had a lot of problems with the watercraft in particular. I would get turned over in the water on the California Harbor stage and I just would sit there sometimes not being able to turn myself back up. I also don't like the physics that much. You bounce around a lot, especially when you hit the electric fence here on the Florida level. And there's one complaint that I have about both the first and the second game is the special moves. They involve four straight button pushes. It's too hard to pull these moves off in the heat of the battle. I wish they had simplified them more, but I do realize there's people out there that might enjoy this element. I did mention the other versions of the game and I do have the Dreamcast version and I played a few stages of it just to compare to this game. And wow, I was amazed by how beautiful the Dreamcast version looks and how smooth everything runs. It must be 30 frames or possibly 60 frames per second. And the control issues are not as pronounced and the physics don't cause you to bounce around as much. The music is obviously better too. But strangely enough, the AI does not seem to be as good as the N64 version. I'm gonna come back to the Dreamcast version one day and just play through it because I think it's amazing. If you've played the PS1 version, let me know how that is. So what's my final opinion of the N64 version? I do like Second Offense a little bit better than the first game, and that's because I think the stages are better, and I think the car selection is better. But overall, I was never a big fan of either game. If you have a memory of this game, please share it in the comments. I'll leave it at that. May your games make you happy and smart. I'll see you next time.